Ellen coming to you from my workshop today. It's been a while since I've talked to you guys and I'm really anxious to get some painting done. I've been working on um, some pieces for other people lately and where they take up a lot of time. Plus, it's super hot out here so I don't have air conditioning out here yet so it's something I have to work on for next year. My name is Ellen. Um, I'm with Flandrance Interiors. Um, I do interior decor, uh, color consultations, decorator for a day. If you want any help with any choices for flooring, wall coverings, paints, arts, uh, accessories, furnishings, just give me a call. My information is on flandrensinteriors.com. That's our website. Facebook, we're also on Facebook. We do these Facebook Lives once in a while. And you can also catch us on YouTube if you're interested in learning about um, doing some painting and you want to learn some techniques and things we're on YouTube as well so be sure to share with your friends and give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and then you won't miss any of these lives coming up I know it's hard to catch them and oftentimes people most of the time people are just catching these um, on the playback and that's fine but if you have it if you have it as follow on Facebook or um, subscribe on YouTube you will see when these come up so you don't you see anything. So today we're going to work on, it's part of a buffet hutch, but I just wanted to redo the buffet part. And I'm trying to figure out a color still. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'll show you what I've done so far for prep. Um, the color I'm a little bit confused on because I want it to be for um, either masculine or if not masculine as a TV unit, I want it to be like a buffet that will fit into anybody's decor pretty much. So, and I know a lot of the decor these days is like an almond color or browns or blacks or grays or things like that. Hi there. So, um, and I'm by myself, so if you do leave a comment, I'll answer it later, but I can't see your questions right now once I get my, my back turned here. So I am going to um, point you to this thing. So what I've done so far is I've stripped the top of it off. Um, hopefully this doesn't wiggle too much. So I've stripped the top of this and um, it was this color here below. Uh, it's not a very nice color, I don't think. It's kind of, hi Kathy. Um, this color here below was what it was. Um, and I have sanded this all and then the really parts I've used uh, Fusions Ultra Grip, which is just a, you can paint this on to any really detailed spots that are hard to sand, and then you can um, paint over it so it allows the surface to paint on. The top though is really neat. It's kind of got these burn marks in it. I don't know what they are. I'll just bring you in a little bit and show you. It's kind of got these little marks in it, and I don't think they're knots, but they were actually underneath the um, when I stripped this with paint stripper, it would be, were underneath and it's got a really cool grain. So I think I'm going to stain this one. Right now I've just got some shellac on there as a wood conditioner. Um, and I use shellac one or two coats before I stain just so that the stain takes evenly all over. That's a trick to remember. Um, so I have some colors and I, I tend to use fusion mineral paint. I dabble with some other paints too sometimes. This is soapstone, it's a dark gray. It's a really pretty dark gray. So I thought that went well with the, the wood. Um, this is cathedral taupe, which is kind of a brownish, it's kind of a creamy, brownish cream color. Uh, that also goes pretty good, but I think it's too much the same. And then I thought of doing coal black, which is just a pure black. Um, and that I like, and I also have these very strange handles. These handles are really neat, though I've never seen them before. Um, this is the back plate, and they go on the piece like that. So I'm also, I think I'm just going to spray paint these gold. If I do a lighter color, I'll spray paint them black. If I do a darker color, I'll spray paint them gold or brass or copper or something like that. They're pretty neat, though, aren't they? I like them. And then um, another color is bayberry, but when you go to sell a piece, if you do these to sell, the trouble is, is bayberry is an uncommon color for people's kitchens and dining rooms, so I might have a little bit of a struggle reselling it. And the other one is lichen, and lichen is a really, 
um, it's like a mossy green, more of a more of a, a light mossy green. It's a really pretty color. Um, and I kind of like that, but again, I think it kind of clashes with the handles. But if I did do this color, I'd probably do the handles black. I'm not really sure. So that's kind of my dilemma. I, I don't want to do like a white or a um, raw silk or anything like that because I just think that might be too 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 light so i don't know i'm tending to think i think i'll take that one out um i'm not sure about the gray although that can look pretty nice i'll think about that one uh cold black maybe linen is a really pretty color i've done a dresser in this and it was awesome and then i did black wax on the uh, details and this cabinet has a lot of details. I'll move the um, thing down in a minute to show you, but I think this is almost too green and I I don't want to do a lot of um, blending or anything on it, so um, what to do. So this might go, although if I do that gold, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a dilemma. I like this though. So I'm kind of thinking black but then i get thinking about someone's dining room and whether they would actually want black so i think i'm going to go with lichen lichen is uh you're not supposed to shake these you're supposed to stir them but whatever um lichen is a really pretty um light green and if i don't like it i'm going to paint over it so i have to get the lid off this and i do that by banging it on the floor hopefully that will work Sometimes if you give it a few wax, it works, and this time it's not, which is ducky. I should have done this, but I was kind of a little bit impromptu with my, um, oh, there we go. I was a little bit impromptu with my thing today, my session today, so I didn't, this looks really dark, doesn't it? Like, it looks dark, but it goes on beautifully. It's a beautiful color, and I think it'll go nice with the wood and the gold or brass handles as well. So I'm going to move this down. Oh, there goes my, my seat. Um, it's super hot in here. Oh, it's been over 100 degrees for many days, so my shop has no air conditioning yet. That's something I've definitely got to get for next year. I'm going to use this. Um, it's like a two-inch oval. This is just a Rust-Oleum oval. I get these at Canadian Tire or um, Rona. They're about $20 a piece, and I love them. They're super soft on the end. They're like a medium brush, but they're, they clean up beautifully. And then I also have one that's, I don't think this is a rust -Oleum one. I got this one at Home Depot. I think it was like $15. No, I got this at Canadian Tire. It's a one-inch round, and I love these brushes. They're awesome. So I'm going to just put some paint in my little tray here. See how far we get with this. And I start with this. Take my painting off. I think if I do this and then I do some um, uh, antiquing afterwards with some black wax, I think it'll look pretty neat. This has such neat um, bits of, of distressing. Like, I don't know if it was all banged up from when they moved before or what it was, but I really like it. So I kind of want this thing to, to look a little bit modern, but also a little bit woodsy, you know what I mean? So I'm going to leave the doors on to paint. I'm going to move this way down now. So bear with me as I move it down. And then you can see better as I'm painting. And this is where a camera person would be so handy. Okay, so let's start right here. You can see the difference from the stripped wood to the old wood, hey? It's just quite a, this is like a 19, I would say 1970s style sort of buffet thing. The top is really neat, but it's all glass, and I, I don't think I want to use it. I really don't. So I'm just going to spritz my brush a tiny little bit. And I'm going to paint. So... The first coat of paint is usually really god-awful. It's, it's a terrible look. But when you get into the 
second coat. And you can tell me what you think of this color if you're watching because I think it's going to be nice. And I can use black wax to accent afterwards too here. It's kind of awkward painting on an angle like this, but can you see that okay? Um, I'm not too concerned about how well the first coat goes on. I don't really fuss. Um, what I do is I will take the paint, put it on, brush it out nicely, let it dry, and then I'll do the second paint. And the thing with fusion paint too that I love is that it dries pretty fast. It's not a chalk paint, but it does dry really fast. So you should be able to do a first coat and have it dry within about 30 minutes. So by the time I get to the other side, this first coat will probably be dry. So I've got it on. Now I'm just gonna make sure it's smoothed out. And it doesn't have to be great. You can see at the bottom here, it's kind of blotchy, that's fine. I know a lot of people, they do their first coat and they're so fussy and they freak out because it's not looking right. Um, I need my screwdriver. Um, and then they get really upset about it, but first coats guaranteed look horrible. Doesn't matter what paint you're using or how good you are of a painter. Even painters, you know, like that paint houses, when they do their first coats, they fully understand that they're gonna look terrible. So I don't want to paint the back of these doors. I'm hoping to just leave them wood, um, but I'm gonna just be really careful as I'm painting to wipe off any excess there. And I'm gonna give it another bit over here. You can apply heavier paint. I tend to paint um, with, I guess, lighter coats so that the paint's not really thick and gooey. Um, I know you can see some videos where it's really thick and they just kind of smear on but I don't like that look so um, I tend to do a little bit thinner coats although right there I did a little bit thicker I like that color you know why I like it is because I can add a bit of white um, um, glaze or white wax to lighten it up but I love the look of these two colors together the stain which isn't stain yet that's the natural color and then the, the wood here so I think it's gonna be a really pretty color hi Shirley thank you I like it too I wish my I gotta get a better tripod <laughs> my tripod is horrible it's so jiggly it is pretty isn't it I really like it Nice to have someone watching paint. You know what it's like painting and you're talking to yourself all the time? It's terrible. You feel like you don't even, you feel like you're talking to no man's land all the time. But it's nice to see someone's watching. So, yeah, this is going to be a, a kitchen, like a dining room. Just a buffet part. I'm not doing the top part of the hutch. Because I might do something else with the top part. But um, this is going to be a revamped buffet, and it's going to be really pretty. And so far, I am loving this color. It's very nice. So again, I'm using a, a two-inch oval, and I don't use very much paint at a time. I, I tend to really blend it out uh, well when I'm doing it. So get it on, and then just smooth it out. So now I'm, I'm down to this bottom bit here. You can see down here. So rather than go to the next door, I'm just gonna grab that paint and come in here a little bit. And just blend out any blobs so that there's no blobbing. I don't like blobs. We'll bring it over here. And then we will go to the next door. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really make it look that simple, but it's really not that hard once you get kind of used to paint. 
Um, I've always painted walls and and houses and things like that. And I'm not even a really great house painter, to be true. But um, you just kind of get the idea of what paint does. And there's always the thing, if you don't like what you're doing, paint over it. So again, I'm kind of getting this messy on these sides here. Can you see that? I think I'm off camera. Um, but then I'm going to go back. I have to take these doors off later on and, and fix them a bit. But what I'm doing here is just rubbing off any paint I've got on the very, very back. That's kind of overage because I don't want it to be over. Okay. You can take doors off. In fact, usually I do take doors off to paint them. But, um, I don't know, this one I just decided to leave on and work around it. And I want to paint the hinges, because uh, I don't like the hinges. They're kind of tarnished and yucky looking. So, I get the paint on. I'm going to give my brush a little spritz because it's a little bit dry. As soon as you start to feel your brush dragging, give it a little spritz of water. And it'll really make a difference. I want to get into these corners. And I'm going to spritz the whole surface there now. You can do that too, spritz the surface. And see how smooth it goes on when you do that? Just a tiny little bit of mist. This is a mister. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Like that. Um, and it's, it's not a spray type bottle. It's a hairdressing mister bottle, they call them on Amazon, is where I got it. Um, I love these because any water-based paint you can mist and it just extends it a little bit to be able to paint with it better and not get all sticky. A lot of people really complain about their brush strokes, but it's mostly that their paint is too dry and this stuff dries pretty fast, so you have to be on the ball and catch it. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw these out a little bit. Can I get anything? And we'll go to the next one. So in case you missed it, I'm just gonna show you again. These are the handles that go on this unit. They're really, really interesting. Um, I think I might, I'm going to try and, and buff up this co uh, brass or whatever it is, copper, I'm not sure. Looks like brass and this looks like copper. But this is how they go. Um, the back plate goes like that in there somehow. And then this goes like that. So they're really a cool handle. I really like them. So once I get it on here, I'll see how it looks with, with this. And if I don't like it, I'll do them black. So that's the scoop. And while I was looking over here, I just noticed the blob. So it's a good time to check for any runs or blobs and then just paint them out. So that one's done. And I'm going to go right over top of these um, hinges here. Sorry about all the wiggles. And we're going to go in here and paint out these bits down here. You just have to mush it into, mush it into where you want it to go really. And then just, once you've finished mushing it in, you go back and you smooth it out. Smooth it out as much as you can. And like I said, the first coats are never going to look good. Sometimes even second coats, but I think I can get away with two coats with this color. I actually think it's going to be um, not too bad. And the top, uh, this is what color the top came out when it was stripped. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to stain this. Um, and I'm going to leave it pretty much the color it is. I'll put a, I'll put a coat of stain on it, just something really light, only because... Um, the stain, if you do it properly, will be evenly distributed and it won't have any of the um, 
unevenness that this has now as far as the color. So that's kind of the whole point of stain is to give it some color and also even out the wood a bit. So, we'll keep going. Uh, I could use a roller on the sides of this one today too, but I don't think the sides are big enough to justify um, a roller, so I'm just going to brush it out. Like I said, this paint, I'm using the Fusion paint today. Um, it dries about maybe 30 minutes, so by the time I get here and around, the other end will be dry and ready to go again. So I'm just going to mist again to get a little bit of water on my brush. I'll give it a whirl. I think it's going to be a cute little unit, though. I have um, in the background there, I'll show you, my chair set that I just finished that goes with the table that's behind me. It's a little antique table um, that I did. I didn't do that one on camera. I did it off camera. I did it uh, over a couple of weeks, and the only reason I did it over a couple of weeks was because I could not find new feet for it. When I bought it, the lady said, this table is really low, I don't like it. <laughs> so I, I looked at it, you know, I was looking at it and I thought, well, it just needs to have some new feet put on it, like some, some adapters for feet, right? So I, I bought it and um, I've ordered three sets of feet now off of Amazon to raise it up two and a half inches. And every time I get a set in, it's, it's, it says in the advertisement that, that it's the right width, but I get it in and it's a little bit too wide, so then I order another set. But other than that, it's all done, and it's so cute. I did the chairs white and a beige and white gingham, and then I did um, the table. I stained the table. And then the table legs I did in Homestead Blue, which is a really, really pretty antique blue color. I just love it. So that one's up for sale. And it's a gorgeous little set. It's actually, um, uh, McLagan, McLagan was the furniture maker. And he, he, um, made furniture in about 19, in the late 1920s to about 1945 or something like that. I think that's right, 1920s, late 20s to about 45. And it was a Canadian company. And um, so that little dining set is like 90, pretty much 90 years old, I guess. That's a really good way if you've taken your handles off and you can't get your covers open, just grab a screwdriver and jab it in there. Away she goes. Oh, I love this. This is, this is pretty. I'm thinking already, sometimes I get totally stuck on what color. And like I said, this one was a little tricky because I'd like for it to be either a TV unit for an apartment or a house or used as an actual buffet because um, this is the bottom of a hatch, buffet hatch unit. And a lot of people don't like the big buffet hatches anymore, but they like these small, these small ones. So I'm just going to go and wipe the back in case I got any over. And down here. And we'll go to the next one. And I'm going to get some water on my brush. All right. This is the last door. I think I got a little bit too much water on there, but I'll blend it out. Smooth it out in a second here. So we had a bit of a rough week here. We had a, a sick little puppy. And... The vet told us she just had kennel cough, so we've been fussing with her and 
going back and forth to the vet, and then finally, two weeks after the fact, they did a, a chest X-ray and found that she had super bad congestive heart failure. And we, we took her on as a foster dog a year ago. And when we took her for her first physical, we found out that she had um, a murmur, but the vet said that uh, she would end up eventually one day, quote unquote, <laughs> with a heart problem. So we were like, okay, well, she's only nine, so she should last quite a while. <laughs> anyway, I guess that heart problem. Apparently the kennel cough stressed her heart and um, she ended up with a very enlarged heart and pulmonary edema and we kept saying to the vet she's not getting any better and not getting any better and all she would do is refill her prescription for cough syrup and I said no there's something wrong like there's something really wrong um, so we finally got her to do an x-ray because we asked her originally if she had pneumonia or something and she said no no it's just um it's just kennel cough so you know, she said, just check back in a few days, or we check back in a few days and she wouldn't be any better. I'll just give the medicine a little bit longer to work, see how that goes. And so we would give the medicine a little bit longer to work. And then we'd run out of medicine and we'd say, she's not any better. She's just coughing nonstop and she's getting weak. Um, we finished the antibiotics she gave us just in case it was something to do with um, with pneumonia or bronchitis and that wasn't it either so it ended up finally um, where she had the x-ray and it was uh, pulmonary edema and it was so bad that she said she probably wouldn't last more than a few days <laughs> so that was bad news and then the next day we had to take her back um, she just she couldn't even stand up to cough. She was so weak. I was getting a little bit annoyed at everything. So we took her in. Um, we decided that if the vet listened to her and said she wasn't any better after the cardiac med she'd been on for a couple of days with that, that we would put her down. Because, I mean, the poor little thing, she could not stand. She, she was just, in fact, that day she looked like she was going to pass away to me. So I was very concerned and we went in and the vet said she was really bad off and she was not at all better in fact she had more fluid in her lungs so that was it we just decided that we put her down so that's how our week went it was just awful and of course our other dog He's a little Bichon, and I don't know if you know anything about little Bichons, but they're very, they're very emotional dogs. They're super cute, super emotional dogs, though. And uh, he's been looking for her all week, and he's been trying to figure out where she went and what happened. And very sad, but we've done all her crying this week. It's time to get back to painting now. Okay, so that's coming along. This is the handles, so I might, again, try to clean that up, or I might paint them black, so you can tell me what you think. If I do them black, um, I'll probably put black wax as a, a, an accent around here. I'm going to do something with this, I'm not sure quite what yet. I'm going to move this, and hopefully it doesn't fall off its wheels. Okay, I'm gonna push everything down here. And I wanna get to, can you see that? Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna push this up a bit. I have to be careful because it's all on rollers and sometimes like that, the rollers fall off. So, okay, let's do this bit here. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna spritz this a bit because the wood's super dry, it's been sanded and it's had a, big sander on it to get the um, to get the uh, 
to get it, the surface scratched up for. So I'm going to go right under here. I've taped under here so I can go right under here. And I'm going to go right into these hinges and down this side here into that hinge. Right along the bottom. I do have these up on rollers so it's easier to paint and I don't touch the floor when I... But you can put... Some people put um, for underneath, they actually put soup cans, <laughs> which I think is a really novel idea. Or if you have... Um, empty coffee cans or something you can use that too just to get the thing off the floor because when you're doing along here it's really easy to hit the um, floor with your paintbrush and my floor is already a disaster so I don't mind but some people paint in their house I'm just gonna get this on like I'm really just smacking it on there and then I'll show you what I'm doing Kind of like the wild and crazy painter at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to spritz my brush a bit. And then I'm going to go back over this top part nicely. Down along the side, along the bottom, and along this strip here. Give my spritz one more. And then I'm just going to lay it off really nicely. It's getting a little sticky because it's over 100 degrees in here, I swear. Uh, this is the first coat, and like I said, the first coats always, always look terrible. So just go up and down in the same direction. You don't want to be going all over now. You just want up and down in the same direction. Okay. So look, you can probably see it already, but I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. Look at how, um, sorry, my thing's stuck. Look at how awful that looks. That's you see here. That's because of the paint being having a bit of water, but it's also wet, and it's got brush marks and streaks. So. If you were just learning to paint and you were doing that um, and you looked at it like now, you'd be freaking out because it looks terrible. I mean, it really looks terrible. But that's going to dry. And then the second coat will go on. I think we only need two coats with this lichen color. Um, the second coat should go on like a dream, really. But isn't that starting to look nice? And it's just a very 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 pretty green um it's almost like i guess a gray green is how i would describe it more. okay so that's um this is going to be stained so i've got it taped off right now and i will sand it down just scuff sand it one more time i've already stripped it uh washed it with a bit of mineral spirits and steel wool to get the, the top nice and then i took my sander to it to level it all out and then i put a little bit of shellac and it's got these really cool marks on it i don't know why but i like them i like all the distress look on it so we'll put a, a bit of stain over top of that okay so how long have i been on here i can't see my clock from here I really can't see my clock from here. I need to move my clock. I'll go a little bit longer, but if you guys are getting bored, you can pop off. Um, I'll probably do one more session of this because I want to get it done. And the thing with this one, too, that I will show you, is down at the bottom, there's that you can see that strip down at the bottom. Um, I'm going to reface that because it's got some damage on it. So I'm gonna get some one by um, half inch by two inch board slats and redo that. And then I'm gonna get some legs, some feet, probably about three inches tall and bolt those into the bottom. So it'll now be off the floor and it'll look really cute like a, a real buffet. So. 
that's the plan with it. So I'm going to carry on here. You guys can hang out if you want. Um, if you have other things to do, I understand. But let's get going here. I need some more paint is what I need. I'm going to drop some more paint in here. And this is the... Uh, this is the Fusion Mineral Paint Linen, not Lichen. Lichen is another one, but it's a lot lighter than this. So there's, it goes like this. It goes Bayberry, Lichen, and then Linen is a green lighter than this. It's like a super light mossy green. But this is a really pretty color, I like it. I'm just gonna dump some more paint in here. And put that away. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see the streakiness here. Um, I'll just show you a little bit more. There's a little bit of streakiness. So this is dry. And that's what I mean. It dries super fast. But the streakiness you'll see when we do this round goes completely away. So I can see a lot of it even here. All right, so I'll show you how well it covers. I think we've got a good view there. Uh, my brush, I guess it's not bad. So let's tackle this. So this is coat number two, and if I see that it covers well without showing any of the undersurface, then I know that I only have to do two coats. And right now, it looks really good. Okay. So look at that. Do you see how well that covers? That's two coats, that's one coat. You can see the difference, can't you? And this will dry more of a mossy green like that now, but it's to that point. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm not really being more careful this time, although I will make sure that I don't miss any bits. If I missed any last time, I have to catch them this time. And I'm going to use probably a little tiny bit more paint each time on my brush just to make sure I've got really good even coverage with every brush stroke. So. It goes really nicely. The first coat actually, I think, takes more effort because you're really trying to press the paint into the, the piece. And the second coat just glides over the, the paint finish from the first coat. So even here with the second coat, look what I'm doing. I'm smashing paint into these bits. So you've got to get into all these corners and all these edges. So I'm pushing it in, but then I will um, take it and smooth it out everywhere. There's a streak there, so I'm going to smooth that out. Now, the thing to know about this paint, and I'm not promoting this paint because I do use other paints too, um, but I like it because it dries well. It's kind of like a chalk paint, only you don't have to put a finish on it after. Like chalk paint, you have to wax. And then you have to re-wax like once a year kind of thing. This you don't. It dries. It's an acrylic. So it dries beautifully. But the nice thing about it is it is self-leveling. Like if you buy Benjamin Moore paint or you buy Coverdale or Dulux or Sherwin-Williams or any of their really nice paints, you know that... Um, they're expensive, but they're self-leveling, and that's one of the reasons they're more expensive. Um, and that just means that you get the paint on, and even though it looks like it might be a little bit ridgy, it levels out. So it'll, as it dries, it starts to expand outward, um, and that's called self-leveling paint, and it's well worth, well worth it, trust me. Um, and then any little tiny bits of whatever I have there should level out like here that should level out when it dries It's not lumpy. It just looks a little bit 
discolored there, but it's not anything I've done. It's just the way it's going on. And in the next couple of days, I will probably flip this whole piece on its back. And, um, and get the bottom side cleaned up. So that's, that's one drawer and that's a nice, nice difference compared to this door. Do you see the difference there? Um, that one's done now and this one's just the first coat still. So we'll go again. I hope you guys are having a good summer. It's been really nice here. Usually we have forest fires. I think the last maybe four years we've had forest fires. And it's been awful. You can't go outside. It's just the air is too acrid. It wrecks all your health, your plants outside. Of, last year I just took all my plants and got rid of them because they were dying from all this smoke in the air. And... Um, this year, oh my gosh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful summer. A little bit hot, but it's always hot here. We're living in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia, and it is hot here every summer, pretty much. Which is why we get lots of forest fires, too. Um, but we live right near five, we're surrounded by five big lakes, so it's just really fun for especially people that are visiting now. It's nice for them to go swimming and go to the beaches and things. So again, I'm trying to get my brush strokes upwards and downwards, and then on the sides, I'll go that way, upwards, sideways, this way. And I'm not too worried because it will level out, but it also has a bit of a wood grain in this um, piece. So that is going to um, help keep showing any brush strokes. I hear some people say it's got it's got this wood grain look and I want to fill it in and I go no that's that's the easiest thing to paint is those wood grain pieces. <laughs> Don't fill it in just leave it. So. Okay let's wait this one. Like I said I'm gonna I'm gonna clean up the back of these but I'm just gonna leave them and put some wax because when you open it, it's wood, so it doesn't look like it conflicts at all. And I, it's just a lot of extra work, like it's a ton of extra work to paint the insides of these, and it's really not necessary. Um, I pretty much don't ever paint the insides of them. So this is just as easy. There's a bit of extra paint here. I've got most of it off. And then if I have some still left over, I can sand it off a little bit afterwards. But just a little squirt of water on your cloth usually takes it off like that. Okay, carry on with this one. So I have... Um, I can't remember where I left off on this one. I have uh, another one of these buffet base units to do. And I have another set of um, a table and six chairs, which is an antique set as well to do. <laughs> And I have a beautiful old buffet, another really old antique buffet to do. And I think that's all my inventory. So I'm going to try and get a couple of smaller pieces. So my paint's getting sticky. I don't like that. I want it to be malleable and workable. Um, I want to get a couple of smaller pieces to do. I have done... Uh, I've done two antique dressers for a lady recently, and those are on my Facebook page, or at least the one is. And the other one I don't think I've posted yet, but um, they turned out really beautifully. And I went to her house to do some decor work, 
and she had them all in her room and set up. No, they were so cute. Just super, super cute. So can you see again the difference between first coat and second coat? Quite a big difference, isn't it? That's first, that's second coat. This is first coat. So it's a dramatic, dramatic difference. Comparatively speaking, I'm going to try and get these hinges a bit better. And I can jam this right up under there because, like I said, I've got it taped off, so I can just uh, work away jamming my brush into these grooves and then I'll smooth it out like that. And the hinges will get. Um, they're getting painted right now, but I'll probably do some black wax or something. Whoopsie, there it goes off the of my roller. <laughs> oh, darn. Oh, well. These rollers are great, but they do fall off sometimes, so. That's okay. I'll just keep going. So, after I've done these two coats and it dries really nicely, I'll take a little sanding pad of uh, probably 400 grit sandpaper, maybe. 400, 600, 800 grit, it doesn't matter. Or even one of those little uh, soft sanding pads that you can get at the store. And I will um, just give it a really light sanding all over, like a super, super, super light sanding. Maybe I'll show you that after if I remember. But super light. And then um, that will be... That will take this to an ultra smooth finish. And then you don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to wax it. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. But I will probably use some antiquing wax just to kind of give it a little bit of accentuation, not to make it look antique, but to give it some emphasis and some shading, some shadows. Look really nice with these. Okay, so now I've got the painting and I'm going to smooth it out. Okay. Get a little bit of water. Isn't that pretty though? I just really love this color. Get in there. And like I said, the inside, I'm just going to vacuum out, tidy it up a little bit. Um, I have a bit of trim on the inside to do. Whoa. This, uh, I don't know if you can see it down at the very bottom here. I've just got it painted in that one little, one little strip of trim there to tidy that up as well. It's gonna be really nice, I think. So this is this is just an old uh, hutch. It's a two-piece, and I see them all the time on marketplace for like I don't know. This one I think I paid a hundred dollars for, maybe. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what I paid for it, but they're generally about a hundred to two hundred dollars, and I would never pay more than maybe a hundred. <laughs> Unless it's a really unique one, like the one I have downstairs, the old Duncan Spice, I paid a bit more for that one. But, um, just a bit in here. But they're really inexpensive, but if you just keep the base and put feet on it, risers of feet, um, and you can buy the wooden feet on Amazon or at Home Depot, things like that. They make a really cool unit for your living room or a gaming console or just a whole bunch of things, really. Okay, I can't roll this because my roller fell off. But look at the, look at the difference in two coats and one coat. I think that's pretty neat. And this is the linen color. Very pretty, very pretty. Um, mossy green, very light mossy green color. And it's a fusion mineral paint. 
everybody has their techniques. I know some people do all the corners first. I just kind of go around <laughs> and then I figure it out in the end. And as long as it's moved out to one type of stroke in the end before it dries. So you have to be a little bit, you can't paint like this and dilly dally because you will be forever in a day. You'll get frustrated. The paint will dry. Um, it'll just be a mess. So you have to be a little bit quick. So I just like to get it on any which way I can and then I will go back and smooth it out. So probably after this I think I'm going to have to stop because I have to fix my rollers. And then I will come back maybe tomorrow and work on it some more. And we'll spray paint those handles. So now the more I'm looking at this, um, the more I think I do want to do the handles in black. And some black wax accenting as well. And once I've done this too, if I see any spots that I think I've missed, I just go in and fix them. Like it's not going to hurt if I spritz it and then just quickly go fix it. I'm running out of paint. And that is that. So I think I got it all maybe up there. So I hope that was helpful. If um, you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them and I will answer you. Thank you if you watched all of this. Thank you for watching because it's kind of nice not to be talking to myself all the time. But I don't mind. I mean, I'm trying to do these as sort of instructional videos um, as much as anything. I'm not really, not really doing it for the company. I just want people to see that it can be done. And there's so many people trying to learn how to do this right now. And I know it can be so frustrating to learn. And some people make it look easy and some people, oops, some people make it look super hard. And I don't think it needs to be super hard. Mm. Well, it's kind of a messy bit. You know what's really, really handy, and I don't know if my husband took them or not, but I usually have baby wipes out here, and I use the baby wipes for um, wiping these little bits down like this. So I'll go back and redo them a little bit after. But that's two coats. And then, like I said, if we get these handles on, and I really think now that I want to paint them black, I think that'll look really neat. They're kind of cool handles, actually. So that's it. And um, I'm really hot. I'm like purple in the face. <laughs> but it was fun. It's, it's going to be a really neat piece. And um, so if you like it, and if you want to learn more about painting or just watch painting for something to do, like our page, follow us, share, go to YouTube, and subscribe there, because then if you're not online to see these videos, um, it'll pop up and tell you that there's been one done, and you can just go watch it at your leisure. Um, and thank you for, check out our website, flandrensinteriors.com, we do all kinds of interior decor stuff in between this stuff. Um, sometimes, like with the lady whose dressers we just did, we have been decorating her house and she has a bunch of antiques, so we got to do a lot of her antiques and I have a really nice buffet from her coming in soon too that's from her dining room. So I think we're down to one room left to do in her house, but it's beautiful, beautiful. Just, it's like walking in. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time. I'll probably be on tomorrow sometime to do more on this piece so we'll finish it up.